We might be drunk, we might be drunk, as long as we are hanging out, you know we might be drunk. Raise a glass, let's talk shit, head peeps, Rex, and a bit, maybe drunk, we might be drunk, yeah. Ah, here we are, <laughs> we might be drunk, we're back, we're off the road, we're in Manhattan, it's holiday season, woo! What are we drinking today? Uh, we got some gin and tonics. Oh, the, right. the bear Jew transitioned fully. <laughs> Not really a cold weather drink, but what the hell? What the hell? It's, it's nice in here. You know what these? Thank you, yeah, no internal problem. affairs. It's great. <laughs> what, what's great about these is you have them while you're waiting for the family. You know, when the food's cooking, you throw a few of these in. Yeah. And you can handle your aunt. I love a gin and tonic. Oh, yeah. I, I prefer, like, the soda. I don't The sugar just... You don't think of tonic as having sugar. I know. But it's got weird? sugar. I just don't like... The sugar just... Mm -hmm. You just feel gross. Yeah. You the don't, poison I can do. It's the sugar. <laughs> <laughs> you don't taste it either. Isn't that weird when there's sugar in something and you don't taste sugary? Yeah. So it's a waste. It's like a waste, yeah. Yeah, what, I'm getting the calories and none of the sweet. <laughs> yeah, it's like when you find out you're like Fig Newtons and you're like, they're not even that healthy. I know. Remember snack wells? Oh. Pull up snack wells. Oh, you got the Malamars. <laughs> I'm well, pulling those... up Malamars. Don't oh. get me started on uh, devil's food bullshit, all that shit. Um was it Mal snack wells? Malamars. See, here's my issue with Malamars. There's too much going on. Mm. Pick a lane. <laughs> you got you got the you got the marshmallow, the graham cracker crust, and the is that graham cracker? What is it? The it's just a cookie. Cookie crust. Cookie crust. Cookie crust. They're good. It's it's not my go-to. I'm a I'm a simple it's, man. I didn't realize until just this moment, but that's a s'more. No, yeah. Samora is a comedian. She's a black lady comedian. <laughs> Remember Geraldo's roast joke on her? He goes, when it comes to comedy shows, we could use some less. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I actually opened for her once at Caroline. Did she was, you? She was great. Yeah. She, was, yeah, she seems cool. Super cool. I mean, she's been through the ringer. Yeah. All those older black comics are like seasoned. Yeah. And, you know, much like. Well, uh, those black shows when you're coming up are like. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I go by Old Bay. <laughs> uh, no, those black shows. I remember like Mike Lawrence and I used to go to like Mocha's Lounge. Or oh, whatever. yeah. Remember that? I went to a few of those with uh, Smokey. Smokey. Yeah. yeah, he was cool. Super cool. Super funny. And like you see these guys up in these Harlem rooms and you're like, you guys are all amazing, but you'll never make it. You know, you're all like 64, you're smoking on stage, you're You've killing. Got a cane. You got a cane, you got diabetes, you're calling the lady in the front row a hoe, murdering, and they're all brilliant and hilarious, but they're just stuck in Harlem. Sad. It's a fun room, though. Mm. And I remember watching Lawrence just do like uh, comic book references that they're just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> we don't fucking watch this shit. <laughs> and, uh, I, that motherfucker's an Aquaman. <laughs> <laughs> but then, you know, I. I had. I remember I had one. I I remember I had one joke kill in there that was just like Phil. I mean, you, it gave you confidence. You're like, it's a different type of crowd. Oh yeah, you know, it's Coliseum. It's either this or this. Yeah. You know, there's not much in the middle. You're either crushed or they booed you. They smell fear. You're dead. Oh yeah, and you got to try not to do the token white guy because that's that's <laughs> what your brain's like. Just get out. Just do the token white guy. It's easy. You'll, they'll love it. But you got to be you. Yeah. First time I, w I went full token. Really? Yeah, I was scared, and they played some like two chains to bring me up, and I was like, two chains? Why not one? And they're like, ah, this, <laughs> this motherfucker corny, you know. Just uh, <laughs> I had to play ball, you know. <laughs> Corny is like the highest praise from a black crowd. No, what's the highest praise? Bad. No, no. no. Hi highest praise is you crazy or you're stupid. Stupid, <laughs> stupid. All good. insults. Yeah. I know. <laughs> stupid you're is like big. you moron. You're like, oh, that's stop. You're like little dick. You're like, all right, cut it out. Uh, Keep going. We love you. No, no, you're it's stupid. That's yeah. stupid. While they're laughing is good. Oh, well, he's stupid. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's big. good. Or uh, yeah, what else is good? Uh, crazy's good. Crazy's good. Yeah, he don't play. I don't know. Well, I'm that was the Martin right. Lawrence special. You so crazy. That's oh, right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I also, Richard Pryor show, special. Oh, and that yeah. N word's crazy. Yeah, yeah. that's tough. Uh, that's asking for the record. I know. <laughs> you know. I know. I don't want to. Uh, I I have some records at home that I want to put up, and I'm like, I can't put a bicentennial N word on my wall. <laughs> oh, you I can't. got that. That's on my wall. Really? Yeah, I right next to Cosby and then Woody Allen. <laughs> <laughs> I got an Epstein record up there. <laughs> <laughs> he did a Christmas album. I forgot. Jelaine's greatest hits. My favorite. <laughs> the twelve kids of Christmas. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Woo. 
Um, yeah, man. The, I I don't. I mean, we can try them. I'm not. I, I love. I've never had one. I maybe I'll be wrong. I haven't had them forever because I'm I'm a simple man. I like like a Lorna Dune. I want a shortbread cookie with my coffee. Lorna right? Dune. What's that? Sounds like yeah, a writer for shortbread the Times. cookie. Yeah, yeah Lorna Dune. Like Who's Lorna Dune? <laughs> Have you read Lorna Dune's review on the uh, Symphony? <laughs> it sounds like a like a women's uh, mystery uh, yeah, writer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Lorna Dune. What is a Lorna Dune? It's that little thing. Oh yeah, I've those seen are good those. cookies, man. I don't. Just that box looks like my grandma's house. I, I wouldn't walk I right say past your grandma's that. box. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a lot dustier. But uh, oh, hey, thank you. Wow, these are beautiful. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I thought it looks like a uh, toss- macaroon. Oh, Yes. Which sounds like a racial slur, by the way. <laughs> a couple of macaroons. I remember your old bit about uh, how every Chinese restaurant, the, the names just sound like a slur. Yes. You goddamn golden noodles. Yeah. <laughs> what were the yeah. other ones? Uh, let's see. Panda King. Panda King was the big one. Yeah, that that was like my big first big bit in New York. It's good. It is good. Oh, crunch. I was wrong. The shell, the candy shell. I'll give it, it to you. Takes a big man. Takes wrong. a big man. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I'll tell you, big man really seems to care. Everybody drink. <laughs> <laughs> this is oh, pretty good. Wow, great. It's just it's just very rich. Like first few bites are good, but like how many of these can you? Really, I guess that's good. They're only available like November really? to January. You can't get them. It's like the McRib of of candy. Mm-hmm. Is that is that true? Yeah, yeah. They shut Why? it down. I don't Why know. Why they shut it down? I don't know. Maybe it's like too rich. Maybe it's a marketing thing. They know you'll buy it more if it's special. Yeah. Like but a like the year They got me. <laughs> yeah. What? They got me. Yeah, they got you. These are great. You know what's great about it? There's a lot going on, but they make it work. Mm-hmm. They got. They keep it in line. Now, the secret is to freeze them. Oh, boy. Yeah, that's a real treat. All right. Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah, I, what, like freezing candy, like Charleston Chew Frozen, pretty good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think I brought that up before. but mm-hmm. I don't like hard food, so I'm not yeah. into freezing. Yeah, you don't freeze ever? No, nah, I don't freeze. No freeze. I'm anti-freeze. Hey. <laughs> right. How about the fridge? Will you do the fridge? I'll do fridge, but freezer just makes things hard. I can't have a crouton. I can't have a Biscoff. Yeah. And it's candy. To me, that's a perfect candy. I'm not going to ruin it with making it hard. <laughs> yeah, I wonder I wonder if the people who are in charge, I'm sure they don't care, but maybe there's like some you know Malamar purists out there who are like, you don't freeze it. <laughs> right. That's not how you consume the Malamar. <laughs> yes. Now, there is a bar called Frozen. You ever had one of those? Uh-uh. No, no, it's called a zero. Oh, we brought this up. Two oh, weeks sorry, ago. sorry. I zero is meant to be frozen because like zero degrees. Oh, how about those uh, ice cream candy bars? Like you get like a Twix or Snickers ice cream oh. bar or a Choco Taco. Those are so good that you feel guilty eating them. You know? Yeah, I've never, I've never gotten one of those not high. I don't think. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah, like that is yeah. like a high person's. That's what <laughs> that's you crave. True. Mm-hmm. That's so the true. Twix, the Twix ice cream bars. Oh, are. I don't know. Snickers is hard to beat, but oh, shit, I had a point. Damn it. Oh, oh Tom, Paul F. Tompkins used to have this great bit. He's like, what's better, cake or pie? And everybody's yelling, cake, pie, pie. He goes, cake is better because it has frosting. And when you eat frosting, you feel shame. <laughs> That's how good it is. And it, was, it, was a, it was a great bit. I'm I remember that it. bit. It was like a long bit. Long bit. He could really milk yeah, he was good. Oh, so good. Uh, his first album, Impersonal. Give that a whirl. Yeah, he Fun could really album. milk like a prostitute as well. <laughs> what? Uh, mm. Yeah, Malamars, these are pretty good, Matt. I got to give it to you. And I feel like I wouldn't have like 10 of these, which is nice. Like I have Oreos. I mean the whole box. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oreos are fucking good. And they, now they have too many flavors. Though. They're getting carried away. I do like that double stuff, though. Double stuff is, is I mean, that's, you know what we like, and yes. you gave it to us. Yes, exactly, exactly. I like the blonde one, though, too. I like the... the I love the blonde. Yeah, I like the, maybe it's not called the blonde, maybe it's just called the, the honky. I don't know what it's called, but... <laughs> I prefer the interracial, the original, <laughs> black and white. It's pretty good, but dude, I like the, uh, and something about an Oreo that's pretty classic. Yeah, I agree. Now, let me ask you this. Tomorrow is Hanukkah. Or yeah. the first day. No, it is. It's Hanukkah. It's day six. Oh, we're already on day six? Yeah. Wow, it flew by. Uh, do you do stuff? Do you get a gift every day? Do you give a gift? What, what are we doing? Do you circumcise? I don't know. What Everything, everything's gotten weird, you know? It's like, how many things are we going to do? I mean... It's a lot of things. I want to get my, my folks something, but yeah, I, I mean... I don't my my I remember Atel used to have a bit about like how my family was cheap, you know, they'd be like, you know, night one you get a, a bike handlebars. 
<laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, and then builds to a bike. Builds to a bike. That's but like, great. Yeah, I mean, it was like, everyone says like Hanukkah's better because, not everyone, there's a few Jews. <laughs> I don't think everyone's saying Hanukkah's better. That, that came out wrong. A few proud but, boys. <laughs> disagree. <laughs> a few proud boys. <laughs> They're like, actually, Hanukkah's pretty cool. <laughs> They yeah. got us there. No, you get you get eight crazy nights. So that's the whole thing. But then it's like the truth is you, they kind of it's usually one cool thing and a bunch of like guys like on night one Hanukkah chocolates, right. gelt, and you're just like, all right, socks, <laughs> shit that you love as an adult, but as a kid you're just like, I mean, as an adult, socks are you guys wear those socks I got you right? Yeah, as an adult it's fine, but as a kid, it as sucks. a kid it's brutal. It's yeah. like vegetables. You appreciate it as an adult. Well said. The sock is the vegetable of gifts. Yeah. You don't get it till later. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I don't and know. Terry Shivo is the vegetable of people. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Whatever happened to her? I don't think it ended well. Ah, did they pull the plug? <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. Well, you know, she went peacefully. I don't, I don't know. I think that looks rough. <laughs> Was there... I think there's like a nine-year fight between her parents and her husband. Of The husband said, pull the plug. Parents said, no. Oh wow! It's also a great. Yeah. It's a great symbol for that. This That's country can't agree on anything. I know. Right? I know. <laughs> that was Kyle Rittenhouse of its day. Uh, That's what it was. <laughs> and then what's up with Kevorkian? Remember that guy? Oh, Doctor Death. Doctor Death. That guy was the king. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is it wrong? What do you think? Let's. Have I mean, the I went to him with strep, and he said I should kill myself. But I, mean, <laughs> I thought that was rough. Uh, you're like, I got a zit. He's like, do it, end it. <laughs> <laughs> like put the gun down, yeah. Doctor Jesus. Use. Yeah, I mean, see. he people wanted to die, and he helped him. I don't know. Some yeah. could say he's a hero. Yeah, uh, Pacino played him in a movie. Oh yeah, I'm yeah. killing people. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> she was a whore. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Sam, grab the new- patient's face. You broke my heart. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was you. Uh, uh, so Sam is a New York. Jew, how do you spell Hanukkah? Like, Ooh. what's the proper? I go, I go with the H, the classic. But okay. people do the C H. Well, who does that? Israelis do C H. American know. Jews do H. I don't even know the difference. Mm. I don't know the difference either. But I will tell you, I, I go H. I'm like, why are we confusing people here? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. I only celebrate Juneteenth. So. <laughs> Mark's a Kwanzaa man. Yes, the celebration of lights. <laughs> no idea what Kwanzaa is. Hanukkah's fun. I mean, Sandler made me feel like cool to be a Jew as a kid. There weren't like a lot of those. But the Hanukkah song, you're like, all right, Hanukkah. Sandler really kind of helped. He out. really did. He put it on the map. Woody Allen, I like as a kid, I liked, but he did, well, he wasn't cool. Sandler was like a cool Jew. Yes, he was. He was cute and funny. And he listed, that's how far off Jews were. He had to list Jews to be like, look, you like us. You know, he had to be like, Paul Newman's half. Yeah. yeah it was a great song. Yeah, Paul Newman's half Jewish. Goldie Hawn's half two. Put them together. What a fine Fun looking, looking Jew. Jew. <laughs> that was classic, dude. Yeah. He's and, like, oh, sorry. Oh, no, it, as a non-Jew in Louisiana, I heard that song and I was like, this is great. And it was yeah. informative. I didn't know about any of that shit. Yeah, it was great. I mean, look, we got some, you know, Mari Stoudemire from the New York Knicks. Uh, he converted. Whoa! Uh, yeah. We got some cool people. All right. That helped the old Jewish team a lot. Whoa. Otherwise, we're looking at guys from like the 1950s, like Dolph Shays, <laughs> before black people played. And we're like, yeah, that's most of the Jewish team. He, Although the Israeli team is good now. I mean, okay. Omri Caspi, there's some good Jews. You but... got Koufax. Oh, Yeah. Koufax was a man. And, and Edelman on a... Julian Edelman? Yeah. He, I don't know if he's... Is he Jewish? I assume with that name. I, he might face. not be, though. Yeah. This can't be real pick. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, dude. He's what? going all in with the he, hat. He's, he's like a pilgrim. Look at that. Yeah. I love it. Mm-hmm. Love Damari. He seemed like a good guy. Now, what's his, what's his... I mean, I know Sammy Davis went Jewish. I think for marriage. I think for marriage. Yeah. yeah. And then I don't know. What do you think he's doing it for? I think he had just really um, blood. Yeah. Mm. All right. How um, about that, Sam? Can you can he play uh, on Saturday? Can you check what's <laughs> on the table here and vet this? Like, is this all like legit? I mean, what is that? Grape juice? Oh, uh, looks like a little prune I see juice. Matzah. Some manischewitz. Matzah. Yeah, I'm not a great Jew. I'll be honest. It's more my cultural aspects. But yeah, I mean, matzah. I, I like Passover. I like the story of Passover. I like uh, Hanukkah. I mean, I, I do the classics. I'm not. A, I'm not. I'm not rocking in there for Sukkot. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm there for like you know the the high holidays. Yeah, I, I I just am jealous as a big fat atheist nihilist. You know, nothing matters guy. It's got to be nice to have something. In your past, your background, you know, ethnicity in a way. 
I mean, I don't, know. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, it's probably not that different than what you're living, though. Honestly, yeah, that's true. That's I mean, true. it's a pass. I like those holidays, like Passover, because it's like, ah, oh, you just come, you see family. It's like almost like you know, the way you see family on Thanksgiving. It's nice. It's yeah, also stressful. But when Weinstein gets popped or made off or Epstein, your mom's like, "Oh, a Jew." <laughs> we don't have that in my house. We're just I like, ah, Whitey is very. Uh, we're loners. We don't care. I don't care about other Whitey. I'm not like, yes, Rittenhouse got off. You know, <laughs> he's white. Well, there were, there were, there, were, there are those guys. You're, just yeah. not, one, you're not just. One oh of those yeah, people. good point. But I mean, uh, yeah, we were a smaller portion of the population. So it, it's a little more personal, I think. You know, right. I mean, I, there's a part of me when I see like Facebook, all the high ups at Facebook, like Zuckerberg, Sandberg. <laughs> I'm like, can we get a fucking O'Malley in there? <laughs> can we mix up the blame, please? Right, right. But you know, you guys, uh, you handle shit. You run, you run the office. <laughs> the way, the way uh, like a black guy will run the Steve court. I think, I think Kyle Rittenhouse handled shit in one uh, way. Oh yeah, good point. Good point. Yeah, he got shit done. <laughs> <laughs> that was his defense. He got shit done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was his lawyer Jewish? I don't know, actually. I, know. I mean, the odds would say yes. Give it a go. There's a Rittenhouse rye. Oh, really? Yeah, Rittenhouse, the liquor. I'm sure. I'm wondering if they're just like, did it have to be yeah. Rittenhouse? <laughs> right. It's like our friend Joe Zimmerman. He's like, come on. <laughs> you're killing me here. You think Orange Juice, when OJ did it, was like, God damn it. <laughs> well, Corona, beer. <laughs> Corona. <laughs> yeah, there's a million of them. Oh, Delta. Delta. Yeah, they're, I'm sure they're furious. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark Richards. All right, probably, probably a goy. Yeah. Probably a goy. Yeah, relate to Michael, though, who dropped the N-word. <laughs> oh, <so>. my God. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, we're rolling. <laughs> What is this you got up here? This this photo is beautiful. Is that a Midnight Cowboy? No, it's close. It's Dennis Hopper. What it, movie? American Friend. They're I've playing a Dennis Hopper movie at the Metrograph. I Which forgot, one? I forgot the name of it. Uh, the last the last movie? No, it was from the early eighties. It was with Oh, this is it this could be American Friend. Maybe. Is it Dennis good? Hopper was a cool dude. Oh yeah. Very cool dude. Yeah. 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 Very cool. Art He's an amazing photographer as well. If you ever really? look up the amazing photographer. If 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 you're listening to this and you've never seen like the classics like Easy Rider, it's kind of Nicholson's breakout role too. Mm -hmm. I mean, Easy Rider's incredible. Yeah, that's a fun movie. Eat Five Easy Pieces is in there for, yeah. for Nicholson too. Yeah, uh, but this was before that. This was his first. Yeah, that was true. I think is. What about um? I'll tell you. Can I give you my rec? Because you kind of gave me a good Please. setup for it. Shout out to my buddy Alex Brazell. Uh, I know Al. Al's great guy. Love him. Dude, he texts me, and he he just texts me noir stuff all the time. He's mm -hmm. into noir, so he'll be like, have you seen Detour? I'm like, yeah, it's like, have you seen Out of the Past? I'm like, I have a big, I got a Out of the Past uh, poster framed above my desk. Nice. I love it. I love that movie, Robert Mitchum. Anyways, like, you got to get the Criterion Collection. Here's my log. He gave me his login, which I'm like, I'm going to have to just buy it to support uh -huh. it because it's so cool. Dude, the Criterion Collection, the, the categories are like, uh, old New York. Oh, uh, wow. Fox Noir. Uh, you know, like vehicles with Robert Mitchum. Like these are all the categories. I'm wow. like, this fucking rules. Wow. So I saw Colin Quinn do something. It's, did you see it? it for Criterion. Yes. Yeah, no. And I didn't know he most does his of the picks, movies. Like his best, his top 10. And they put him just in a room of all the Criterion movies and he pulling them off the shelves. And I watched what? Which is, which is best YouTube 10 movies. recommended a couple after, so I watched like Paul Dano and uh, Michael Sarah in there too. Whoa. And they were both great. They're both. Yeah. I saw Safety Brothers did it as well. What? Yeah. It's Are cool. these on YouTube? Or yeah. Is... yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. They're really it. fun. Yeah. Well, I didn't know like any of the movies Quinn was referencing, so I felt dumb. And I saw, and a lot of them are obviously on there because yeah. it's the Criterion. So I'm like, I got to, I got to watch these. I love it. So that's my rec, and and they've got one of my favorite movies on there. So this comes with another rec. Uh, it's an Otto Preminger uh, film noir from the 40s starring Dana Andrews, uh, Clifton Webb, and Gene Tierney called Laura. It's incredible. Laura. It's, it's one of my favorite movies of all time. I've seen it probably five times. I own it on DVD. Wow. But they have never it on Criterion. I've never heard of it either. Uh huh. It's excellent. Ooh. And Gene Tierney was a smoke show. Femme fatale. Does she try to kill them? I can't. I don't want to give the plot right. away. 44. Dana huh? Andrews was a very good actor. Very underrated. Uh, not like not more like a modern actor. Well, okay. Beautiful... But very kind of understated for the, for that time. But he was good. And Clifton Webb rules. It's it's just a cool ass movie. I love it. All right. What great name, Clifton Webb. Oh, he ruled. He yeah. was great. All right. I'm down. So that's my wreck. Well, give me a, give me a wreck. Well. 
I was going to say something similar to this, actually, but my mom got me that Masterclass bullshit. Whoa. It's pretty good. Well, who are you watching? I watched the Steve Martin one, and then there's a Scorsese one. There's all these great directors and, and comedians and stuff and writers. Uh, what's his face? Paul Thomas Anderson, Daniel Incredible. Day-Lewis. I mean, the list goes on. They got good people, and it's really good. Paul Thomas Anderson is a new movie out. Uh, yeah, that looks more like kind of not like his type of movie. Right, it looks yes. a little softer, like, like a little a more personal. Coming of age, uh, high school teen movie. Philip Seymour Hoffman. What his son? Is that right? Yeah, Cooper what? Hoffman. I think. What? Is that, how do you feel about this? Because it's like Gandolfini's son, Philip Seymour. It, it's I'm for the, it. You're for I'm it? For it, yeah. yeah. But Give it is chance. kind of a weird form of nepotism. Like nepotism. I know Hollywood runs on nepotism, but it, to me, it is a little. Uh, but I, I saw Tim Dillon, I thought, make a great point about this, where he said... Uh, it's nothing new, though. I mean, Jamie Lee Curtis is daughter of Tony of Curtis, and Gwyneth Paltrow's dad was... Oh, and Janet Lee was her mother. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Debbie Reynolds and Burt Reynolds. Sure. Liza Hudson, Minnelli. Yeah. Liza Minnelli, yeah. Well, also, uh, Nicholas Cage is Coppola's nephew, right? Yeah, yeah. there we go. Jason so, Schwartzman, I think, is related. So it's all that. Sophia Coppola. But I will say, like... Tim Dillon made a great point. He goes, you're depriving the world of the next real James Gandolfini. Because he could have gotten that role. That's good. And I think that's a pretty a pretty damn good point. But that's the next good. James Gandolfini should be his son. I mean, it's literally his blood. It's Well. But we got James Gandolfini out of nowhere. Okay. And now I think there's someone who's, who's maybe his age who's been training, though, too. So, I'm, you know, yeah. I thought his son was, I, the movie was tough for me, but I thought his son was, was good. But yeah. I'm just saying... Yeah, what if every comic point. was related to Jerry Lewis? Well, we've you done that. We prior. dealt with that. We dealt with some comics who were related to famous comics oh, coming up. Oh, that's right. And uh, they didn't always do the work. Yes, a lot of coasting <laughs> on the looks. I don't know who we're talking about here. but They were doing so much coasting, I put my drink on their head. I'll tell you. Oh, <laughs> right, you know? <laughs> do you want to see this? That's the singer from Haim, the band are we, Haim. Are we allowed to do this? With... Matt, are we allowed to play a pre- uh, 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 video? Not too much. Uh, All right, that's enough. Did you maybe give the... it 20 seconds? Right. Become such a hot shot actor. Oh, you're already past 20. That's what I meant to do. Whoa, this does look, this looks more Wes Anderson-y. It looks like Noah Baumbach or something. Yes. Yeah, it does. Do you know who I am? Yeah. Oh, nice. Do you know who my girlfriend is? Bob Shizend? We should probably cut it so we don't get demonetized. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, Bradley Cooper, nice to see him pop in. Mm -hmm. Crazy that he just, he started as a dude from Wedding Crashers. I know. You rewatch that movie and you're like, he was a nobody in that movie. And then you rewatch it, you're like, he kind of steals a lot of this movie. He's fucking funny in it. And then The Hangover, he's the lead. Yeah. So yeah, he really uh, came through. And then he's in American Hustle and all the- Silver Linings. Silver Linings. Yeah, he's a leading man now. Yeah, he's good, man. I think he got plugs. Really? Well, give it give it an old goog on a pick on uh, old... <laughs> I like the stars with us being like he's great. And they're like, yeah, I think he's I think he's cheating. Yeah. What what is that called? Um, yeah, he's got old. He's got like thinning hair in the early days, yeah. and then now he's got a full beauty on top. Well, Steve Carell got that clearly, yeah. right? But it looks it looks good. It looks good. Kimmel, Seth MacFarlane, Joe McHale. I mean, um, that's like serious hair. Maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong. Well, I actually photographed him right after Wedding Crashers. Yeah. Uh, I may have it on my computer. We'll see what his hair looks like. If you got the money, hey, fuck it. <laughs> well, this, is, this is some real detective work. How, what, nice guy or what, what do you Very think? nice guy. Yeah. This is it. I don't think it's a good version of it. Beautiful eyes. Oh, that's a good, good photo, man. Oh, thanks, man. Where is that? Uh, an alley on Canal, off Canal. Wow. How, yeah, yeah, his hair looks great there. No, it's... Okay, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. The allegations won't stand. Okay, well, <laughs> g- give me Kimmel and McFarlane, and it'll, it'll redeem me. You think Kimmel me. has plugs? I guarantee he has plugs. This is what men do. We sit around <laughs> looking at old hairlines. I mean, Look at this one. I got sidetracked, sorry. Oh, yeah, Jude Law, but that's Jude no Law. secret. Remember, remember Jude Law? Uh, Chris Rock made fun of Jude Law at yes. the Oscars that year, and Sean Penn came out, and he was like, Jude Law is one of the finest <laughs> actors <laughs> Yeah, he's joking. <laughs> he was so, they're so defensive. I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ, you're getting blown the whole evening. I you know. can't a couple jokes. Exactly. Jude Law. I'm looking for Tom Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> something like that. Dude, what, um, damn, there was, I, I just read something about like Sean Penn. I didn't know this, that he like a- abused the shit out of Madonna. Really? Like, look it up. Beat her up? Like, tied her to a chair and beat her. Oh, a little Army Hammer action. 
Well, you didn't eat her. That's well, true. Beat her. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm not finding Kimmel hair plugs at all. Ah, uh, you're, you're losing your Mark's skills. Mark's making a lot of fucking allegations here. I don't know. <laughs> It's um, my screensaver, all these guys with uh, no hair. I could show you this shit in two seconds. Come on. What are you, what are you typing in? Jimmy Kimmel hair plugs. You got to go Jimmy Kimmel. He got His people got that wiped. I, maybe they did. They might have scrubbed it. Uh-huh. I mean, if you can't find McFarlane. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, I think they scrubbed. McFarlane's a, he's a good looking guy. Good looking guy. Underrated looks. Oh, yeah. I mean, because he's, but that's, isn't that great that your looks are underrated? Because that means you're phony. Ah, good point. Cause he, I mean, dude, I was, I was watching Ted again the other day. It's oh, fucking great. So Remember, funny. We all watched in Vancouver in my hotel room. It was yeah. like, you, me, <laughs> Carmen Lynch, Gary Veter. Yes. So funny. List, Phil Hanley. Yeah. Even number two dude, was funny. By the way, I was at Phil Hanley's uh, recording. I saw you there too. You were photographing. Mm-hmm. Phil crushed it. It's Shout out to Phil special. Hanley. It's going to be a great special. Marcus Russell Price, who made it look awesome in so the yeah. good. Did a great job. Love you, Marcus. Proud of both of you guys. Phil, uh, he did such a great job. Did some crowd work. Got loose. It was cool to see comics show up for him. Like, yeah. You, you're like Louis in the back. Aziz is in the back. It was it was pretty great. I'm I'm proud of him. And and you know what? I I went as well. And Phil after was beaming, which is so rare because comics hate ourselves. We yeah. hate our act. We're worried about it. We, that was the one. You get one shot, and he was happy with it. That's how you know it's good. He was proud, and and it's a long time overdue. I mean, I think he should have done this a while ago, but I'm glad he did it till he was like finally ready. But you know. Uh, we got to take the power back as comics, man. Hell yeah. Because yeah, well, you don't want to wait on people to give you shit. And a lot of people are waiting and you really, you got to make your own shit. Totally. I mean, Rana, there it is. Ronan's doing one. <laughs> Joe List is doing another one. Stavros is doing one. I mean, YouTube is the move, baby. Phil looks baby. like he's getting canceled there. He's like, this <laughs> motherfucker touched me. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that's a great, who took that photo? Salicuse. Wow. That's we got to get that guy working look, again. Look at that scarf. <laughs> I know, right? Jesus. Saw a lot of people. It was great to great to be home, man. It's, a, it's the best club. Yeah, after Phil's thing, I hung out there till like 3 in the morning. I just couldn't leave. I was there on the street, and uh, I went to our, our friend Rami Youssef, who I haven't seen forever. You know, his old friend. I haven't seen him in ages, and we're talking for like, you know, 20 minutes on the street. It's just one of those, like, oh, dude. Yeah. And uh, immediately, some woman, we were probably 10 minutes in the convo, some woman walks up to Rami with her husband. She goes, your show changed our life <laughs> and then as that's happening a crazy guy walks over to me and he's like let me talk to you dude oh, let me God. this is like the two different new york experiences yeah. you have the one guy getting blown <laughs> and this other guy just being like let me talk to you dude i'm like i don't have money on me dude uh, <laughs> <laughs> i haven't done my spots yet i don't have cash yeah that's new york it's funny because i live in where in my neighborhood i live by ronnie chang and we bump into each other all the time and he's the sweetest guy on on the sidewalk he's a sweet guy on all, all the time but he's like how are you how are things going and he like puts his hand on your shoulder pocketing you he's yeah. like, how are you buddy but then you see his, his stand up and he's like chinese people fucking smell <laughs> <laughs> all right Ronnie. i love him but he's so good i text i told him to come on here man and he he couldn't do i tried to get him uh i think for the next one he, he's not available but he's he said he's he wants to come on busy guy and yeah. he'll drink with us oh yeah i've gone to bars with him he'll, he'll put him back ronnie chang great i was going to australia great guy he brought me like a spreadsheet of all these restaurants and bars this is where you need to go you got to go here i mean he's like he's like a savant when it comes to where to eat and drink we'd hoop together in the park a lot too it was, he was fun to play with because he actually plays d <laughs> he's got discipline i like it you know yeah a lot yeah. of guys you play with they don't play d they're costing you buckets that guy goes all in and i respect it there you go ronnie i had to follow him the other night at the cellar i, I he murdered so hard he made fun of will Silvins for like 10 minutes it was killer <laughs> And we got to get Will on here, too. Oh, we got to get Will. Oh, man, he's he's the best. Can you tell us about that hang after the Hanley special? Because it seemed pretty epic. Epic hang. It was at the cellar. We had the big, long table in the middle. Uh, Hanley's lady is there, and um, Brian Hamilton, and Godfrey. Hanley's lady? Doesn't he have a lady? I don't think so. Oh, he was uh, schmoozing up pretty good with some brown skin <laughs> lady. <laughs> that, that's his type. Oh, yeah. That's why I assumed. Yeah. But I... I think you might be right, because I was like, hey, how are you? How do you put up with him? She's like, what are you doing? I was like, ah. I was like she doesn't get it. She's not yeah. funny. But maybe that was that. Yeah. Mm. Pretty hot. Nice. So I assumed. Hey. Phil's a hot guy. She's a hot Indian. <laughs> I figured that was a, a match. But uh, yeah, Ron was there. List was there. Sarah was there. It was a great time. 
Yeah, and it was a great special. So I'm, I, I was, I was there for like most of the first special, the first taping. And then I was like, yeah, I'll watch the first half of the second. But I was like, I couldn't leave. I was like, I just want to see the whole thing. So. Yeah. So oh, after the show, dance, what after a great the show, picture. someone came up to me and congratulated me for warming up the crowd so well. <laughs> I don't know who that's an insult on you or him. <laughs> <laughs> Who's taking these picks? They're great. It's me. Wow. Wait, what do you think? He's just pulling up non. <laughs> no, I'm just setting them up. <laughs> on the... He's uh, he looks uh, he looks great there. He Thank looks you. like he's wearing the uh, fake nose and glasses. Oh like my you get on god! Halloween. <laughs> totally. He kind of has like Todd Phillips vibe and road in uh, no old school. When he walks in, he goes, "I'm here for the gangbang." Oh yeah, <laughs> he's yes, got that vibe a little totally. bit in this picture. Woo! Ted is a throwback to like those uh, filthy raunchy comedies. They don't I, make them anymore. I think you can get away with it with a toy with a bear, you yeah, know, because well, he's he's like going yeah and all this shit, and uh, it's a bear. So it's cute. Yeah, I kind of miss that a little bit. Oh, yeah. I said that Greg Giraldo roast thing last night, and it's like there was a time where you can kind of just say whatever, and people knew you were like a good person and kidding, and now it's kind of like, well, what did what did this really exactly. mean? Like, what's, You have to think about the impact of the jokes, and you're like, well, these are just friends joking around. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he talked about Laurie Martin's tits for two seconds i don't remember that one. Oh, it was great he's I like you, Mar laurie come on you got big tits i mean if i titty fuck you uh, you might not even see me he's <laughs> <laughs> like you're the only person here's tits are bigger than patrice's yada, oh, yada. Wow. but now that way you could just clip that and be like that's offensive to women it's like ah it's just a roast we're fucking around you know there's no cell phones back then it was it was just fun yeah it's crazy to see footage like that isn't it because you're just like oh wow i guess this is uh this is like actually videotaped. Yeah. Because there was no like people just video, you know, it's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I got yelled at. This was a f like a poignant moment. I was doing a show in uh, Vancouver this weekend and some lady was like, that's inappropriate. And a guy on the other end goes, yeah, it's comedy. Oh, And it was wow. like, whoa, these two worlds. And this guy just kind of nailed it in one sentence and it shut it all down. It was kind of cool. What was the joke? He's like, so I'm titty fucking a retard. We're like, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> titty fucking a retard is my favorite country song. Um, but Dude, yeah, it was just a nice moment. We, uh, yeah, we we had someone at the cellar last night who was like, you know, they have the, the bags. You have to put the phone in the bags. Oh, they don't like that. Well, yeah, this woman, she's like trying to open her bag. She's on her phone. And I'm like, I wouldn't care if I didn't hear her talk. I, I'd given her like three or four jokes where I've talked over her. And at a certain point, I'm like, all right, miss come on and she goes i need to i need to take this call what and i was just like of course like white lady let's do this like, <laughs> yeah. let's, i'm teasing her and then like and i was like and who are you she goes i'm her partner so i'm like oh my god <sighs> like you're both annoying i'm like shitting on both of them <laughs> i'm just like i'm like i'm like how, how are you both this and she goes continue i'm like who's the shitty one you're both yeah so i'm kind of trashing them and then she walks out like in a huff and i find out she like works with like teenage suicide prevention nah. i'm like wow this really uh -huh. backfired <laughs> oh boy but then i'm also like <laughs> Like, no wonder these kids want to kill themselves. Like, know. <laughs> they know her. Well, I'm like, well, she's like, I'm on call. I'm like, then why are you at the show? <laughs> I'm on call. Jeez, some kid is off, fell off a building now because you're trying to get a zinger in. Get out of here. <laughs> I need a good laugh. It's also weird to hear, like, she's taking the call in the hall. She's just, I'm, like, killing up there. She just sees a huge laugh. She's like, life is worth living. She's like, <laughs> I'm, I'm like, so I'm with this chick the other night. <laughs> anyway, please. You ever shit on a girl's chest? Don't do it. Don't do it. Oh, man. Where are you? <laughs> Woo. Oops. Oh, yeah. That's uh, it's it's a weird time. But, yeah, just seeing those old clips. I watched a Carlin video just the other day. It just popped up my YouTube. And he was like, you know what I call feminists? Cum catchers. And the crowd's like, ah! and you know, women are laughing, and you're like, yeah, it was comedy. It was fucking around. We could analyze everything and make it seem horrible, and this is bad because of this, and history, but it was jokes. He opened one of his specials with, you ever notice someone who's, uh, yeah, you ever notice the pro-life people, the people that you want to fuck to begin with? That yeah, was his opener, and you're like, oh my God. So good. So good. So good. What about, um, yeah, I mean, that was that was classic. Oh, yeah. And that's what we grew up on. So then, like, when we get into comedy, then, you know, you start getting better and, and more established, and then it just changes. So it's kind of like, yeah. Uh, and I'm, we're all about evolving, you know? We're, we're not trying to say good. the N-word up there, but it's no. just also like, come on, let's meet in the middle. 
Yeah, no, it is weird where it's like the the line. I mean, that's because then your jokes are inevitably going to age poorly if you're trying to walk that line. Yes. Not all of them, but some of them you're going to look back like, oh, all right, well, I, I, I can't say those anymore. Right, right. You're scrambling, you're at a corporate, you're scrambling your head for material, like, can't do rape jokes anymore. Yeah. Me, uh... <laughs> Speaking of which, it is corporate season. Yeah. You ready for those? I did a private event on Saturday after a Knicks game in which my brother and I nearly got into a fight. Whoa! Uh, hey, whoa, whoa! Let's hear it. Well, I'll tell the short version of it. Basically, we're at the game. It's a one of the worst games. Ever. My, it was a 5 p.m. game I had before the private event thing. So my brother is like, he hits me up. He's like, let's go to the Knicks game. And I was like, it's 5 p.m. I could pro-. I'm like, I'm too tired. Then I have a couple of coffees. I'm like, fuck it. Let's do it. Mm. So we go. It's got to be the worst first quarter of basketball I've ever seen. Really? Like, unbelievably bad, bad. Like, Knicks scored 13 points. It was Ooh, unwatchable, wee. which in the modern NBA is crazy. They're playing terribly. This guy is just so fucking annoying behind us. He's drunk as shit. Long Island, just like the worst type of Long Island, dude. Yeah. And um, <laughs> that sounded like, it wasn't racist, but like, you people are the worst type <laughs> of people. But he's like, you know, pinching people. He's like flicking hair and shit. Yeah. And uh, oh, the stories are gone, Matt, if you're looking for them. I'll see, see if there's an stories? archive of them somewhere. Oh, yeah. Why? Fuck. You I'm gotta gonna, go I, can, I can text them to you. Yeah. You're just looking up. This is the funniest thing, too. I used to have a show on MSG, so I'm just thinking if I fight this dude, it's going to be a headline, like, <laughs> disgraced former MSG <laughs> host, <laughs> dragged out by security, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, let me, I'll send you the Thank clips you. if you want to play yeah, yeah, them. Yeah, please. Should I text them to you or email? Text is fine. All right, let me pull these up. So, um, this guy was fucking with us the whole show. All right. So, your show's at nine or eight? Because if you got a, if you go to a five o'clock game, the game's gonna be what three hours? Yeah, about. And the but, shows that I, we go on at ten. It's in oh, Jersey. Okay, okay, okay. So it worked out perfectly. Dina uh, grabbed me. We did the gig together. Mm-hmm. And uh, all right, Sally, I'm sending them to you. Thank you. And you can go in this order, I think. Okay. This guy's fucking with us. And you said he, uh, flicked, you, he said he flicked your hat. My head. So, what kind of bullshit? So these other guys are pretty annoying in our section too, but they're not as bad as this guy. And like, look, man, I've gone to games my whole life. I can deal with annoying, but these dudes, and my, so can my brother, but these dudes are particularly bad, mm-hmm. you know? So anyway. Start here? Uh, n- whatever order they came in. Let me see. Yeah, that that works, I think. Oh, boy. Oh. Is that your brother? Oh, me the no, that's the guy. Not, oh, that's the guy. Mongoloid. <laughs> that's me calling him a moron and a mongoloid because <laughs> he poured a beer on my brother, fucked up. Then he flicked the back of my head. What? And what? I saw and I saw his hand, and he goes, "It was this other guy." What? So, so that's when I fucking my brother fucking snatched. My brother's like, "Like you got a problem?" Yeah, yeah. pour a beer on. I mean, that's fight. Well, that's the end. Hold on. That's no. Don't don't go there yet. That's the last one. Come on, Tarantino. Right. So play you're your second one here. Second yeah. one. This one. Yeah, maybe this one. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Try him. That's him getting kicked out. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. What a shit face. That's <laughs> me fucking a with him. Jerk off. Yeah, and then, and then, uh, so then security pulled. <laughs> and this idiot doesn't realize. You get out of it. This idiot doesn't realize it. Get the fuck out. <laughs> bye-bye. <laughs> bye-bye. Ah, uh, He's I a hate punk. This guy. Yeah. So then, he, like, he's being a fucking punk. Everyone in the section hates him. That guy next to him, he was pinching the whole Everyone hated him. Wow. So then... Then security, you can play the last one, the other one you played before last where they're chanting. So the best part is we're in the section and they pull me out to be like, what happened, whatever. And people, I guess, follow me on Instagram and the thing. So they see it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So people in the section are chanting, free Sam, free Sam, <laughs> free Sam. Because they don't want me to get kicked out. And I didn't. They just talked to me for like a second. They kicked that guy out. That's did, great. Did he ever take a swing or make a move? No. I was like, I was, and it sucks. My neck is so bad right now, but I was fucking ready to go, dude. Yeah. I was, my brother was, we were fucking fired up. So yeah. Play the last one. Play the Free Sam one. The Bash Brothers. I mean. Must be this one. No, 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 no. Uh, it's out of order. Yeah, so go up. Up. Uh, yeah, I think it's that one where I'm smiling. Oh, okay. Whoopsie. No, not that one. This one. Yeah. Justice served. Justice served. And uh, he didn't have any friends near him. 
He had one other guy who sucked too. They Damn. both suck. What is that? That's People so... suck. Yeah, it's um, like and I said to him, like, I said to him many times, like I was being very respectful before it got to this. I, I'm not doing. I'm not videoing a right. douche until I said, "Hey, man, we're, I'm, I'm here with my brother." I got in his face like, "Hey, you're ruining sibling bonding right here." <laughs> I said, "I don't get a lot of nights off, and you're fucking ruining this." Yes. And I said, "You're ruining a night out with my brother." And once you fuck, once you fuck with someone's family, it gets a little per- like I can't fight, but I'll fucking. I'll throw down. You don't fuck with my. You don't fuck with family. Mm-mm. No, what a pipsqueak too. He's such a twerp. That guy. He was a bitch. Let's hope he doesn't sue us. Yeah, can we get in trouble for that, Matt? Should we blur out his face there, Peter? Also, Peter, your uh, screens off. Screens off again. Also, I yeah, I mean, I already posted on Insta stories. Oh whatever. yeah, yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> we're giving this guy a full. You want to come in, talk about it, and uh, no, we're, you're not. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> no, we bring him in. Sally puts a burlap sack over his head. It's, just, ah, it's, like, it's like an ISIS video. He's yeah. like, I have made a mistake. Uh, yeah, we'll get a rusty knife. And <laughs> all right. Well, do we have to blur his face? Okay, all right. Okay. All right. You know what? I wouldn't. That's the thing. Sometimes you ever post like a video where a guy's like a real piece of shit heckler. I had a guy who went on stage once and fuck with me. And then I posted the video and it got a lot of views. And he was like, can you please take this down? I'm being recognized from work. And I was like, uh, no, this uh, is a valuable life lesson that I'm providing to you. Yes. Now you're getting heckled at work. Ooh. It sucks. <laughs> Fuck you. Blow me. Yeah. Uh, wait, what were we talking about before this? I don't know. Oh, I had something. Damn. But good. Glad. Street justice. Fuck. The- oh, the corporate. Yeah. So the you're doing, the you're corporate. Doing- it was great. It was like a pri- it wasn't corporate. It was like a private event. It was someone's fortieth oh. birthday party, and they were really cool. It was at like a hotel ballroom they rented out, open bar, very Ooh, nice. Yeah, nice. Had Dina, I heard Dina crushing up top, and I was like, "That's a good sign." Good sign. So, uh, you know, uh, yeah, they were they were very cool. All right. Yeah. How about you? What are you doing? Well, I I got some on the books, and I just have the most notorious horror stories from corporates yeah i mean i've bombed everywhere but corporates it's a special type of bomb you just think about the money you're gonna make that's what mulaney said to me once that keeps you going i saw him at the cellar after i bombed a corporate and i was he's like how are you i was like i'm doing really badly i just did a corporate he goes you just think about what you're gonna buy and in my head i'm like well you're making way more money yeah but... yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'm thinking about buying like a, a certain bottle of scotch he's, right, he's, right. He's, he's adding a layer to his apartment right he's like i'll get a sex swing for olivia munn <laughs> oh. speaking of can we get uh, some spots huh read some spots oh yeah we oh, should do an ad geez. here let's all right Voice of reason over here. All right, all right. Honey! Hey, hey. We Might Be Drunk is brought to you by Honey. Your online shopping is about to increase with the holidays. Right around the corner, folks. You got to get gifts. You got to get knickknacks. You got to get food, drinks. And you won't have time to hunt for any deals and looking for the best price. But Honey wants to be your magical shopping elf and bring the savings directly to you. Honey is a free browser extension that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. It's simple. When you check out, the Honey button drops down and all you have to do is click Apply Coupons. Wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons it can find for the site. If Honey finds a working coupon, you'll watch the prices drop. It's a pretty genius idea. Why not do it? Tell them how, fatty! Hey, man, if you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out on free savings. It's literally free and installs in just a few seconds. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this podcast, baby. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash drunk. That's joinhoney.com slash drunk. We All Might right. Be Drunk is also brought to you by Lucy. Are we doing Lucy? Yeah, let's okay. do it. We Might Be Drunk is also brought to you by Lucy. Lucy, the company that made nicotine gum taste good, is back with their latest product, Lucy Nicotine Capsule Pouches. Hey, that's fun. (laughs) Everybody knows smoking's uh, not good for you. We're all trying to get off of it. Smoking's tough, hard to quit. Some people read all books about it and everything, get hypnotized. But these pouches bring you pure synthetic nicotine with the satisfaction you expect with no tobacco. Each pouch comes... Each pouch comes with a flavor ball that can crush for an extra burst of any of their exclusive flavors, spearmint, mango, and cool cider. Cool cider sounds kind of good. Yeah. And since they've thought of everything, each pouch also includes coconut oil to provide a soft, fluffy texture that enhances the flavor and doesn't dry out your mouth. 
Try them in four or eight milligrams. Lucy Nicotine was started to help nicotine users find a definitive option and feel better about the ways they consume nicotine with the nicotine capsule pouches. They've added another tool to your kit. Kill it. It's uh, 2021. Don't compromise when you're choosing your nicotine products. Go with the newest tobacco-free options from Lucy. We might be drunk listeners. Go to lucy.co. And use promo code DRUNK to get 20% off your order of Lucy Nicotine Capsule Pouches or any other Lucy's products. That's lucy.co. Use promo code DRUNK at checkout. Also, I have to give this disclaimer. Warning, this product contains non-tobacco nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. Go to lucy.co and be sure to use the promo code DRUNK. Yeah! Give me a peeve, man. I got a big peeve right up your ass coming at you here. Hit me. How about this? Yeah. Underwear with no opening. Dude, I, I said this on the last on a recent app. I hate it. it hap- hate it's it. happened to me twice. I yes. bought it. Because you don't even think that they would make shit. I know. Where, like, what kind of monster? You think, by the way, you think I'm just like pulling my whole balls and dick out when I, I'm just pulling the dick out. Yeah. What am I, a special needs nine-year-old? I got my fucking <laughs> pants down by my ankles. I got my underwear down. I'm at the urinal, the the uh, airport, like a fucking 12-year-old. I, I hate it. Give someone's, me a flap. Someone's kicking your shoe because you, you think you're giving them a signal. I mean, what the hell is going on <laughs> yeah, here? Yeah, they're doing the tap, you know, the gay, uh, the gay code. But uh, no, I hate the no flap. I'm pulling the whole thing down. My dick's 12 inches, so I got to flop it over. It's a whole thing. But yeah, I hate the no flap. What year is it? It's 2021. Well, they think it's like a trendy option. I, uh, but I, I think it's horrible. I don't, I mean, I shout out. I mean, we're not even doing an advent, but Sheath does it right, man. I, Sheath. I like places that actually know what the fuck they're doing. And, and, uh, I, I went to Gap and I was at like a uh, like a discount type store and I was like, ah, oh, these look fine. I didn't even look. Mm. You got to look. You got to look. Yeah, and can we get, uh, all we talk about is body positivity and big is beautiful. Every man on an underwear package is like uh, Brad Pitt and Fight Club. I know. How about a dad bod? Yeah, I know. Just to feel better. It's a little annoying. It's a little annoying, but hey, that's what's cool about being a guy. We can take it. (laughs) You don't see us complaining, but... Uh, just saying, it's a lot of, uh, a lot of, look at these, oh, that's, uh, Marky Mark, come on, he doesn't get much hotter than that. Why is he grabbing his dick in that one? Well, that's he's a, a tough guy, he beats up Asians but what does in that Boston. Mean? <laughs> but what does that mean to grab your, I mean, that make you tough? You're like, let me fucking grab, they're like, holy shit, that guy grabbed his dick. Yeah, I think. What won't he grab? Michael Jackson started that, I guess, you know, the hee hee. I remember that. Which, uh, I never got, but it just caught on, people loved it. Yeah, I guess it was like edgy, I don't know. Yeah, Richard Pryor, that great joke, it's like. White guy's like, why do you guys always grab your things? He's like, you took everything else, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Uh, yeah, what is with these ads? I mean, these guys are chiseled. They're Adonises. Even Kramer in the Seinfeld underwear ad, I'm like, he's got a pretty good body. Pretty good body, yeah. <laughs> so, like, It's weird. I remember Al Lubell, uh, really funny comic. You've never seen him. He's got a documentary out. Al Lubell would just strip down naked on stage. What? I remember I used to have a bar show, and he would just take all it. He had great... He was like a dry one-liner guy, and then he would just like... He would just get naked. What? He'd go down to his underwear and people would be like, what the fuck is he doing at the cellar? What? Yeah, and then and then he, he would be like, you guys are surprised because you expect me to have a really bad body and it's not that bad. And people would be like, yeah. Yeah, wow, that is weird. Uh, Big J used to get down to his uh, skivvies on the stage. That was his closer. So funny. Yeah, I mean, you, that was back in the day when you were new and you were just grasping at straws. I need any kind of reaction. Most what? people go blue. He went, uh, he went naked. I got a, I got a, uh, yeah, what do you got in the peeve let's world? Let's see what I got. Um, man. Yeah. You know who else has a decent body is Conan. Surprisingly good body. Oh, does he? I mean, he's sheet white, but, uh, he's got, he's got abs. Really? Yeah. Conan's ripped. Look at that. Wow. Ben Stiller too. It's like oh, weird. Oh yeah. Ben well, Stiller is almost like too ripped. It's almost like, dude, you're a comedian. I know. He lets you know it too. It's every movie he gets, you know, shirtless. Look at that. That's a solid sixer. Yeah, yeah. but it's like kind of weird. With Ben Stiller's like, he's like in Meet the Parents and a speedo and a six pack. And I'm like, did you write this one in? Exactly. I think you just wanted us to see how ripped you look. Yep. Heavyweights. That one. Yeah. Uh, Zoolander. Obviously, he's always uh, getting shirtless. Yeah, you're right. 
You know who else likes being naked a lot is uh, Brian Cranston. Really? Well, I just feel like in Breaking Bad, he was in his tidy whities for the first half of the whole show. Does he like that or is that? Because if it's one show, I'm not going to blame the actor. True. If it's every movie you're in, I'm kind of like, maybe it's you. Yeah, and Ben Stiller does write these. <laughs> I mean, in Heavyweights, he was literally a bodybuilder. And then I think in Dodgeball, he was ripped too. Until the end. Is he still with Christine Taylor? Whoa. She's underrated. They might, they might have gone back together. Look at that one. Oh, Adam Driver, man. Looks like a centaur. That is crazy. <laughs> I know. What is with him? Women, he's the ugliest man on the planet, and the ladies love he's him. He's not ugly. Oh, Adam my. Driver? What are you kidding? He looks like the scream mask. Look how long his face is. He's hideous. Yeah, but he's he, he's unique looking. He's he not is. ugly. It's okay. Not, well, if you're like a confident, talented, unique look, I mean, is Owen Wilson ugly? He's like a unique guy. No, I think he's all right. Look, but you put Adam, if he was a cashier at CVS, you'd you'd go, yikes, Halloween's in town. <laughs> I'm just saying. We put him on a yeah, pedestal. All right. Yeah, well, you think Dustin Hoffman would be cleaning, cleaning up as a cashier? Well, I mean, I'm not saying he's handsome either, but uh, but you put Ryan Gosling as a cashier, you're like, this is a good looking cashier. I know, but I, but that was, is every actor supposed to look like Ryan Gosling? No, I'm just That'd saying. That'd be boring as shit. Attractive and unattractive. <laughs> I think he's unattractive. How dare Women you? love him. Women love him. They love him. him. Really they love, love him. him. Well, he is 6'5 or something as well. Also an ex-Marine. And yeah. an ex-Marine and a hell of an actor. Yeah. So I'm, I'm saying he's a catch. I'm just saying he's traditionally... And he banged Lena Dunham on a show, so women are like, he doesn't see, you uh-huh. know. Yeah. Doesn't he's... see. I'm not going to finish the joke. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't see color. <laughs> <laughs> an open-minded fella, is what yeah. I'm saying. Um, let's see what I got. I got... Okay, there's one. That's good acting. People, Dunham. few few worse uh, feelings when you take a, a shit in public, and the second you sit, you put your ass on this on the thing, like a, not in public in a public restroom. I'm not, sure, I'm not bending over in the Starbucks, but uh, <laughs> you sit on the toilet, and the second your butt hits the seat, someone aggressively knocks. Oh, That's I hate a that. The aggressive knock, and you're like. I'm gonna be quick, but you gotta have my back here. Yes, yes. I hate if, if I'm taking a shit in public, it's an emergency. Right, right. And at the aggressive knock, it, it tightens your butthole. You're yeah. like, I need to be relaxed here, and you're doing yeah. the opposite. I uh, hate that, and I hate when you ever have this one when you're in a stall and you just hear like the the guys just you're like, it's locked. Deal. You gotta you gotta accept the fact that it's locked. They're like twisted and turning. You're like, it's locked, buddy. Every every door should have the airplane vacant, uh, no, uh, occupied yes, by thing. Yes, that'd be door. nice. Good call. Yeah, because we've, we've all had that like timid guy in front of us in the bathroom line who's like, "Someone's in there," and you're like, "It's been twenty minutes. Are you sure?" And then they're like, mm, "It's open." You're like, "You freak, right, you right. weak motherfucker." Also, what's up with the crack in the door? It's, it's like it's a, a hell full of a quarter inch. Oh, you mean in a in a stall? In a stall? Yeah, yeah. I hate it. You see that wandering eye? You're like, "All right, <laughs> Jesus, man, I'm you, trying to read." You see it? They see him lift the camera phone. You're like, "Please, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no more vulnerable moment than shitting." Yeah. Isn't there a couple of comedy movies where the guy's shitting and the water shoots up? Oh, what is that? Is that uh, Caddyshack? I don't know. Maybe Animal House? As you know it's going to be a bad movie when they're just like, we need a laugh scene right mm-hmm. here. They're like, what if the shit water shoots up and hits everyone in the face? They're like, that's it. <laughs> that's the scene. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Remember the first time you saw Bill Murray bite into that uh, payday? That was pretty uh, jarring. Was it a Baby Ruth, I think? Oh, a Baby Ruth. Yeah, good call. Payday would have been even grosser <laughs> than inside. It's a lot of nuts. <laughs> yeah, those nuts don't break down. Neither does corn. Corn doesn't break down in your system. What do you think about uh, <laughs> a, right a, a, a Baby Ruth? What do you rank them? I love Baby Ruth. The classic. Love it. Love it more than Payday, for sure. Payday's too much nuts. Too much nuts. We got it. Yeah. Baby Ruth's a nice uh, mix. Yeah. Yeah. What is that movie with the shitting? I guarantee there's a montage of shitty or shitting. Howard and Kumar, there's the diarrhea scene. Oh, and the, we, the, the hot women with diarrhea where you're like, of Yes. Course. And uh, Dumb and Dumber, of course. Oh, that's a classic. Classic. <laughs> <laughs> he was very intimidated to take that role, he said. Because of cause Jim Carrey? Because of Jim Carrey, yeah. He's amazing in it. Yeah. Jeff Daniels is great, man. Great. So good. He can do it all. News radio. Not news radio. Newsroom. Newsroom. Ugh, I couldn't stand that show. It's a little much. It's like literally the most smug liberal shit I've ever seen in my life. Like, the like we're doing the Lord's work. Yeah. That opening monologue, you could just feel, you know that Sorkin was jerking off while he wrote it. He was just like, I'm fucking awesome at this. <laughs> yeah. He's like, you know, we need to take, we need to be accountable. 
the media needs to be accountable. He's like, yes, we do. I'm fucking. I'm writing. I'm writing a show that's going to change the world. Yeah, you know? Sorkin really blows himself on a lot. Of, I mean, look, he's great. Like Social Network, I loved. That was incredible. I think he did a few Good Men. Yeah, he did. And yeah. Moneyball. And Moneyball was great. All great dialogue. Yeah. So, but like he really, I mean, dude, I love Sports Night back in the day. Oh, mm-hmm. that was an underrated show. Great show. I think it was uh, too smart for the room. Oh, it was like a non, it was on like a, it was on like ABC and there was no laugh track. And I think people were like, what? Exactly. Yeah, it was before television was smart. Aha. Uh-huh. Yeah. Good yeah. point. Yeah, yeah, no, it was, it was a different tone as well. I mean, it was, it was a really good show, but, uh, you know, he definitely he falls victim i think some i mean like we're talking about one of the greatest screenwriters of all time we're criticizing one of the greatest screenwriters ever but i do feel like that you feel the smugness in the writing sometimes oh yeah oh yeah we get it you're great take it easy those but, characters just annoyed the shit out of me yeah like yeah. all of them annoyed me right ah uh, yeah sometimes it's too much sometimes you just want to pull back i watched an m night Shyamalama ding dong movie on the uh, on the plane <laughs> which one Old is it good? Ah, it's not great, but let me guess. The twist is that he's like, that he's young. <laughs> That's the twist. <laughs> Basically, these people go to a beach, yeah. and the beach you age like insanely rapidly. Oh yeah. Are yeah, they yeah. tricked to go to the beach? How do they get to that beach? I think, I think a... that beach is called Hollywood. <laughs> oh my god! You're old. You. you turn eighteen and you're old. You. Yeah. yeah, they're at Malibu. I mean, they're at a, a resort, <laughs> and then the guy goes, "You want to see a real beach?" And they throw all these uh, rich people in a van. They bring them to this beach. It's beautiful. They swim, and then they realize, like, "Wow, my six year old." looks like he's 15 and oh, then wow. the do- my daughter was five now she looks Interesting like she's 20 premise. great but premise. what's in it for the guy to bring these people to a cursed beach they do experiments on him i don't oh. want to give too much away wow. but it's like epstein's island he's 18 <laughs> get out <laughs> of <Gotta here>. go <laughs> get back on that jet yeah yeah those girls grew up quick <laughs> but yeah yeah it's fun fun movie but i don't know it's just m night Shyamalan. i feel like he's running off one movie or maybe two uh, the one movie being The Sixth Sense. Yep, that was a great movie. Great movie. Great movie. I mean, it was the talk of uh, it was all. It's all America talked about. I see dead people. It was every punchline. You know, yeah. I didn't see it coming. My friend said he knew. He didn't know. Ah. What about? Uh, I mean, yeah. What's the other one? Signs. I heard is pretty Signs good. Signs was pretty good. Saw it. Yeah, you never I'm, saw it. It's pretty no, good. Unbreakable is pretty good. Yeah, yeah. but it's just a slow decline. He seemed to be making the same movie over and over again. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And that capturing name. that. Well, I think magic. he got known. Everyone's known for a thing, and he got known for the twist, and he almost gets stuck. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. 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 M. Night Shyamalan, though, is just such a. It's such a good name. Like you hear that, it's it's like, all right, we got to go see that. It's so what, recognizable. Yeah. What else has he? He did the happening. That was supposed to be terrible. He did right? the devil. You remember that one that was in an elevator? <laughs> the devil was in the elevator with like six people, killing them one by one. Devil in the elevator. Yeah. What is that about a fart? And, <laughs> and I remember watching the trailer in theaters and people were like laughing at how bad it was. And then when his name came up, just uproarious laughter because everyone knew like, this is bad, this is bad. And then when they was confirmed how bad this was, huge laugh. Wow. At his name. Oh. I love New Yorkers, man. They're so <laughs> cynical and obnoxious. Like yeah. you're literally laughing. It's a, I mean, yeah, it might suck, but this dude probably worked really hard on it. It's yeah. just so funny to look at someone's work and be like, ah! <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. But those movie experiences are great. I saw Iron Man in Midtown, in Times Square. Day it came out, it was me and like eight nerds. They all brought their action figures. And I was like, I want to experience this. Let me go all in. When that fucking head helmet went, they all went, ah! <laughs> popcorn's flying. It was cool. That was fun. I mean, is there, like, you, can you think of a better dude to cast as Iron Man than Robert Downey Jr.? He's they like, nailed the, it. That, that's like, that's the one time where you're like, yeah, he's got to be. Like, no one would have been as good. No, no. Tony Stark. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. And then they made 12 of them after that. 12. But fun in the theater. I saw American Pie in the theater with the famous uh, when he fucked the pie. Some guy, some guy goes, he tore that shit up, killed. Dude, it's fun when when you're at a, at a fun comedy and you got a funny guy in there. Yeah. Yes. But is, the problem is when you get the guy who's not funny who keeps going for it. I know. I know. You know, it's a great feeling though. I got heckled my balls off in Canada this weekend. Just a, it was just. Where <laughs> were you in Canada? Vancouver. Vancouver. Yeah, the House of Comedy. Why do you get heckled so much? Ah, uh, I think they drink a lot out there. You know, they're all nice and hey, how you doing? Hey, sorry. And so they drink and it all comes out. 
Yeah, you're you right. Know, it's it's got to even out somewhere. Did did you were they packed houses? Pack. Yeah, we sold it out, but uh, a lot of booze bags, and also uh, they've been locked down pretty good. So I think they're finally out, and they're really going for they it. They spread the vaccine in Canada out. You get like your first dose, and then you get your second dose in like six months. It was something insane. Yeah, yeah. Or it didn't make a lot of sense. They're still weird over there. I had to get Shout all out kinds to the United tests. States for getting us vaccines. Hell yeah. Uh, also, our president's not wearing blackface. Hey, hey. <laughs> all right. But uh, also, they got a real problem with their indigenous. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll get into it. Yeah, yeah. But either way, I got heckled, and uh, ah, I can't remember my point. Shit. What were we talking about? Ah, we were saying something. Uh, hecklers. Hecklers. We were on a train. M. Night. Ah, I lost it. Damn so it. tell us about being heckled. What was that? Well, that's what I was saying, but I, I know, can't What were the heckles them. like? How did they... Oh, shit in my mouth. I can't think of what I was going to say. Heckle. Have another drink. One gin and tonic or whatever, vodka soda. Uh, it'll come to me. It'll come to me. But yeah, got heckled. Damn it. Play the yeah. tape back, Matt. What the hell was <laughs> I talking about? Shit. I had a whole thing. It was going to break up on a whole discussion. <laughs> That's ah, God. We're sloppy. Fucking yeah. Dumb. What? It's uh, noon. We're hammered. What? What? Uh, <laughs> what was it? <laughs> we were talking about movies. M Night Shyamalan twists. Yeah, yeah. Heckled in Vancouver. They got a problem with indigenous vaccine. Wow. Damn it. We are drunk. Damn it. <laughs> we might be. Shit. Ah, I had some. I'll see if I have any other peeves. You know I always got pee. Give me a pee. Maybe it'll come back to me. I was a point. I was getting two with you have the a, let, Let's start with, do you have a bit, Mark? Do you want to go to bits? I got a bit. It's not great. Yeah, I got one that I, I need more on, but it's I, we'll do that in a sec. But, All right. Um, okay, there's one. I got All a pee. Right. I'm in the elevator, and I'm holding two really heavy bags, and the woman, uh, she asked me to hit the floor. I'm hit holding the two bags that hit, hit her floor. Oh, oh she tells I see. me. I think she's like four, and I'm just like holding two. I'm holding two heavy. But you're gonna make me do this shit? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I weird. Would, I would think a Hannibal Burris's bit. You remember he had a bit where he gets someone, a woman gets in the elevator, and uh, she's like five, please, and he goes, "Bitch, this ain't Mad Men." Oh, <laughs> oh damn, damn that 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 hits. That's hilarious. Yeah. Well, but, in this woman's defense. Um, in COVID times, I'm not reaching across people to hit my elevator button. I ask them to do it, even though no matter what I'm holding, what they're I holding, know, but I don't was, want to reach it, across it, in their I, space. I'm like, now I got to put my bags. I got to do the elbows. It was a whole thing. You mm. know what you do in that situation? You you got to play it up. You got to go, oh, oh, uh, uh, and really make her feel bad. Like, you know, <laughs> drop a, a loaf of bread. And you're like, oh, geez. And then you hit the four. You got to really let her know that that was a bitch to do. But yeah, that's that's crazy. Hmm. And so you hit just, it? You hit the button for you hit the butt with an elbow? I did. Yeah, I got it. All right. I was annoyed, but I did it. That's a pet peeve of mine. I, I stayed in this uh, hotel. It was like the 28th floor. The view is amazing, but the elevator is an issue every day. It's like- I hate high floors. Yeah, you're going down. Now you got to stop at 15, stop at 13, you pick people up, stop at eight, stop at six. And you're like, man, this and elevator- And it takes forever to get up. There. I, 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 up. I hate a high floor. It they, sucks. People think it's like luxurious. I, mean, nah. I, I want to know I can get the fuck out. Same, same. And I'm a big stairs guy. I'll take those uh, fire stairs all day long just because, A, you want to get a little blood flow because you're on the road eating hoagies and drinking booze all night. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I was taking the stairs every now and then. Yeah. Uh, another peeve. How about this? I had the guy do the side cut in line. Oh, I fuck. It's unacceptable. Unacceptable. Well, there's no side cut. There's cutting. It's cutting. It's what's, cutting. What's a side cut? All right. Well, we got a line at the airport, and then you see this, you know, we're all single file, and you see this one guy <whistles> trying to just transition into a line if you side oh. cut toward the end it's it's more okay. understandable but you can't side cut to the middle or the front it was a middle side and mm. you know you got the velvet rope going down then the velvet rope stopped he waited right by the end of that velvet rope and and then you want to say something but you don't want to say something because you don't want to be the the cunty guy but brutal yeah i don't like yeah that that bugs the hell out of me yeah. I, I don't like confrontation but i'll fucking do it 
Yeah. You had a guy yeah. thrown out of a Knicks game. What are you talking about? Uh, I, well, I don't like it. I don't like that. It, I, but I will tell you that fourth quarter was fucking wonderful. <laughs> yeah. The, the, my brother and I were like, I think we needed that. I think we need to get, we had all this pent up rage from the game. And now, you know, the Knicks came back. Thank God. Hell you know? yeah. Yeah. But yeah, this, uh, the side cut guy had some trouble with his, uh, ticket. So it kept going like, beep, 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 you know, wasn't going. And then I went around him and I was like, beep. And then I was like, all right. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. Had my ticket ready there. Yeah, man. I mean, I'm with you, dude. I it's you showed him. I showed him. I don't, you know what I don't like when people do something. Here's a here's a peeve of mine. When people do something shitty to you, and then the next time you see them, they act like they didn't do something shitty to you, and you should be happy to see them. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a sociopath. That's, that to me drives me nuts. It happened to me at the cellar the other night. This guy wrote a book on the comedy cellar. He wrote a really shitty chapter on me, and he what? sent me sent me the book thinking I would think it was good. A whole chapter shitting on you? No, it was like a paragraph. And he reduced it to a paragraph, but it, I was a part of this chapter, and it was just like, "What's the book?" Si- I don't remember what it's called. I don't want to say it. his name. Uh, yeah, I don't want to put him yeah. on blast. But I mean, he wrote. He, I he wrote me. Uh, he, he was going over my alligator joke, the one about the baby that got eaten mm. by the alligator, because he was talking about people getting mad about jokes and ah. stuff. And I and I gave him, I talked to him for so many hours on the phone because I was like, I thought it was going to be a big book on the seller. Mm-hmm. And he reduces what I say to like one paragraph. And it was about me being like, I could bring the book in. It was about me being like, uh, I might have thrown it out. But uh, it was about me being uh, anxious about trusting a journalist to, to write about this with uh, care. Mm. And here we go. <laughs> wow. So he acted all like it was good to see you. And I said, I think your book stunk. All right. And I, and I was like, well, at least what you wrote about me stunk. Some of the other stuff I think was okay. But, yeah, uh, you know, I was pretty I was pretty bummed out by that. What did he say? He was like, well, you know, I'm a big fan. I was like, well, the next time show it in the writing. Hmm. Yes. I gave you a lot of my time. Mm-hmm. I'm having a lot of that on the road. The fan, I had a guy with a Mark Norman t-shirt and he just... <laughs> no laugh. I'm like, you're the you're my support. And you're not even laughing. Isn't that weird? It's weird. Some yeah. people have a, just a bad laugh face. True. They, some people have like a bad listen face, and I think that's the problem. And then they're like this whole time. They're like, yeah. And then you make a joke and like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, resting bitch. They call yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. And then they'll be like, Tuesday we might be drunk. And you're like, why are you ruining the show now? You just yeah. you're so pent up and excited that you're just yelling stuff and i think in a weird way they think like i'm gonna go see sam we'll have we'll hang out we'll interact and you're like it's still a show pretend it's les mis les mis baby you know give me something the song of angry men what the song of angry men brother what's that les mis Mis. do you hear the people sing singing the song of angry men (laughs) great tune great great great. great music that's a real dad musical Mm -hmm. every dad's like we should go to les mis i love les mis because it's a musical but it's like you feel kind of it's like french revolution i feel a little tough (laughs) right it's about stealing bread and bullshit you know (laughs) master of the house that's a great song that's a great musical. Great. It's a great, great. Fuck. The whole thing. Jean Valjean, number 120601. It's classic. I might have made up those numbers. But yeah, I took a humanities class in high school and we learned all about musicals and it was the best class. It's crazy. People shit on musicals, but you get a good one, man. Oh, Throw, yeah. Throwing the little guys and dolls, man. Woo! Too fun. Hell yeah. Bye bye birdie. Don't get me started. Never seen that one. Oh, it's great. It's, it's great. Yeah, I like yeah. that song. Good, good musical. Oklahoma. Wait, what's that? Is that, that's the song? Isn't that a song? Bye bye birdie. That's the musical. I know, but isn't there a song in there called that? Too? Oh yeah, that is the lead, like the main song. Yeah. Bye bye birdie. Boy, see, we got range on this pod. Yeah, yeah. We can go from uh, eating ass to musicals. So I saw this is I guess this is my wreck. I saw this movie. Uh, it's called. At Long Last with Burt Reynolds. Oh, wow. Madeline nice. Kahn, Sybil Shepard. I think it's like 19, oh, there it is, 1975. It's a musical. Huh. Burt Reynolds in a musical? Yeah, I'll just play a couple Can sex. he sing? He, he talks through it, but. I want to see this. It's funny. It's a funny musical. Madeline Kahn is really funny. Had three beers and then ate the glass. Wow, it's actually not bad. I think it's all Cole Porter songs. Ah. So they're going to be good. I don't know. This looks horrible. <laughs> I'm telling you, it was funny. All right. It's so funny that this is like the dude from Deliverance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? He's like, all right, you're going to do Deliverance, and then you're going to put on a uh, monkey suit. And... 
Wow. I guess it's kind of like uh, your Brando in a musical that you oh, like to dude, do. Oh, pull that up. Pull, pull up. There's go mid song of Brando singing "Luck Be a Lady" and "Guys and Dolls." It's the funniest. Can we hear your impression be, first? The fact that well, the fact that Brando gets the lead in a musical over Sinatra is the yeah. all time fun. I oh, mean, did he? Oh my God, he's he's a. Uh, He's Sky Masterson, which is the lead, and and Sinatra's Nathan Detroit. Yeah, and he can't. He talked through it. He's like, "They call you Lady Luck." <laughs> hey, that's pretty good. Give me the brush. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, that's already bad. You might forget your manners. <laughs> you might refuse to stay. But it's so bad that it's kind of good. Yeah, and it's like so Bob Dylan. <laughs> that I can do. <laughs> Where is he from with that voice? Is he in New York? I think he's in New Yorker, but I'll look it up. Luck be a lady tonight. <laughs> Sing it, Sam. Luck, luck be a lady, lady tonight. tonight. <laughs> Dude, he... he never been a lady to begin Sinatra with. sang this song his whole fucking career. I and you know because it's because he didn't get to sing it in this movie. Yeah. yeah. You know he sang it his whole career because he's like, yeah, that's how you fucking sing it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. That's a good musical comedy, guys and dolls. It's yeah. it's hilarious. Yeah. It's just guys being degenerates and and like all of it's just gambling and like the premise is like he's trying to bang this uh woman. I mean, it's like some of those scenes uh, they they're hilarious to watch now. He's just trying to get her drunk. Uh, and and she's like, well, "This tastes like a milkshake." He's like, "Sure it does. Have another milkshake." <laughs> just keeps ordering her milkshakes. Damn. I've never seen it. It's pretty great. You know the songs in it like, uh, and the devil will drag you under from the sharp lapel of your checkered coat. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. You're rocking the boat. Do, do, oh, do. You know nice. that one. Yeah, I do know that one. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you know the tunes. All right. It's classic. Man, he was handsome. Brenda was hot as shit. So hot. Would you? I'd fuck him in the ass. You would? Yeah. He's handsome, dude. Young Brando's hot. Oh, what are you getting the hottest? Old yeah. Brando. Ugh, yeah, Not he really good. 180'd. I'm going to get SD platformed here, but this is Brando sucking a dick. Whoa, that's my dick. (laughs) That's a black dick. It is. I I wonder if that's Richard Pryor's. Actually, they figured out who it is. I could look it up, but I don't remember. Because they uh, they had a hot hot thing for a while. Brando really knew how to push the button. Oh, Jesus, I don't know if that's real. That doesn't look real to me. He he set the yeah. Are we Matt, you're giving Matt Peters a ton of work here. He's getting yeah, very yeah, annoyed. Come on, that was a he, ball he, shot. There. He also <laughs> like how you couldn't find Kimmel's hairline. You got <laughs> Brando's ball sack exposed in two seconds. What what is? Remember we sent the Native American woman to yeah. uh, get the Oscar for him. Oh, Who wasn't yeah. actually Native American. She was an actress. Oh, yeah. stealing a role from a Native American. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And then Brando had play. I think he played like an Asian person one movie. There's some shit where you're like. This is not. I know your heart's in the right place, but some of this shit is weird. Yeah, yeah. I think he went a little bat shit. He went a little nutty. I I watched that Val Kilmer doc, and he said uh, on the set, Val, uh, Brando was a little a little off. I read so I was uh, I read Sidney Lamette's book uh, uh, on making movies, and he said. Um, that Brando, he's like, he's an incredible actor, but he just tortures directors. Yeah. And he would do two takes early on to see if you were good. Like, he would he, he would uh, do two early takes, and one, he would be doing it in his mind the right way, uh-huh. and, the other, and the other one, he would do in a more artificial, shallow way, and if the director liked the second way, he would give nothing to the movie. Whoa. Because he was like, I'm not going to waste my talents on this guy who doesn't get me. So he would, like, fuck with you and play games with you. Oh. Yeah. So you get the great Brando if he thought you were great. Aha. Uh-huh. Interesting. So is is he from New York? Omaha, Nebraska. Wow, Midwest boy. But he got but he he honed his chops in New York. He yeah. Yeah, it was a Stella, Stella Adler. Adler, yeah. yeah. Uh, Stella. He could have some Native American in him. Stella being from Yeah. Omaha. Yeah. Yeah, good point. He's Street got those cars eyes. fucking great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Street cars a masterpiece. Eli Kazan, he named names. He did. He did name names. Not a fan of that. No. He did what he had to do, I guess. I guess. Arthur Miller, he's all over that doc. Ooh, I gotta I gotta it's watch that good. doc still. Pretty good. I mean, I don't know if I'm gonna get to it now that I got this criterion set Ooh. up though. God damn, I'm fired up. Ooh. We got criterion. We do? Oh well, we got everything. <laughs> Stolen cable. <laughs> oh. Stolen <laughs> you it up. Why are you yeah. getting annoyed? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think Mark's gonna like not hit a fastball over the plate <laughs> yeah well I mean I I didn't say the name okay good but yeah it's pretty great little uh yeah, little, but they know his name they know your name but I'm not saying the name of the uh the service Salamanca yeah. yes should we do a bit 
Let's do a bit. I got I got shit. Also, make sure to email us to the Patreon at we might be drunk pod at gmail.com. That's we might be drunk pod at gmail.com. And leave us a nice review on the podcast app or Apple, whatever you're doing. Hell yeah. And see us on the road. We'll plug the dates at the end of the show, but make sure to see us on the road. What do you got, Mark? All right, all right. Now, this is a talk about a half baked, loosey goosey, not much here, and I need your help. Mm hmm. So I was look. I was reading the thing about the the uh, founding fathers, uh-huh. and I got to tell you, these guys were tough men. Tough men yeah. grew up poor, became presidents, uh, been shot at. They duel in the street. Yeah, uh, they talk shit. They're like rappers. Pre- <laughs> forefathers were the the original rapper. Wood Grill, uh, wow. Rough Riders. There's a lot of a lot of comparisons there. Uh, always complaining about slaves. No. Um, <laughs> but they've been shot at. Like Teddy Roosevelt got shot at in and kept doing his speech. Remember that? So I, it's almost like a 50 cent thing. It's interesting. Yeah. It's like, like oh, you want to fuck? It? I love the, the rapper, like the angle of like duels and stuff. Like, I yeah. love, like, oh, you want to go? Let's fucking. You're like, Jesus Christ, what are you, what are you like running for office or, or Tupac? You exactly. know what I mean? Like, yeah, like Hamilton and Burr had, yeah. had it out in the street. Yeah. Gunfight. Yeah. So it's it. It's like East Coast West Coast rivalry, and that's part of why Hamilton's so popular. He died young, hmm. oh, like yeah. Tupac and Biggie. Uh-huh. Ooh, uh-huh. yeah, well known. Some people hate him. Some people love him. But yeah, I don't know. There seems like a lot there with the rapping. My only fear is that Hamilton is rapping with uh-huh. a bit. Oh, that's clever. Yeah, but that's so that maybe you have to bring that around. I mean, right. Hamilton. They were, but then yeah, hmm. Yeah, but it mostly comes from Teddy Roosevelt. He's in a thing called the Rough Riders. He's been shot. You know, he gives a full performance. He's manly. He's, like, tough as hell. He's big. Yeah. Some of them are in a wheelchair. Are there rappers in wheelchairs? No, I guess it's just their homies. But, yeah, I don't know. Presidents were the original rappers. Could be something. There's something there about coming from from the streets. Yes. They all came from nothing. A lot of them grew up poor. They made it. They'll shoot you. Yeah, they'll shoot you in the face, in the street. Oh, um, they don't smoke weed. They don't uh, like paying their taxes. <laughs> yeah, we had a revolution because we didn't like to pay taxes. Good point to the Good British. Good point. Yeah, I like that. Lincoln was against slavery. There's something know. here. I'll yeah, I'll play with it. There's I need something. to really get like a bunch of presidential facts, like. Like a list of stuff that lines up with with rappers. I love Founding Fathers bits. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm into those. Mount Rushmore, uh, maybe something with a Declaration of Independence. That's like Death Row Records. They all come together and sign. <laughs> they all uh, sign it. That's pretty good. <laughs> something like that. It could be like the Declaration of Independence is the first diss track. Hey, diss track. Yeah. Yes. All right. All right. You know, the Republican and Democrat, it's almost like East Coast, West Coast. Beef. Yeah. Something there. You know, Bloods and the Crips, the Red and the Blue. Wait a minute. Uh, the Whig Party. Mm. I don't want to say it out loud, but. Uh, <laughs> you changed the W? Yeah. All right. No, though, yeah. I was going to say the white people rap like that. Huh? Like Eminem would be called a be oh, part of the Whig Party. Oh, Whig Party. I see yes. what you're saying. Wigger. Oh, there you is. go. All right, all right. You're not supposed to say that word anymore? I don't think so. Really? Yeah, I don't think you are. You can say are. bigger. I know, but those are, that's a different word. I know, but it's, uh, all right. What are you supposed to say? Um, whack? That kind of works. <laughs> yeah, it kind of works. All yeah. right. Yeah, there's something about that for sure. The, the, uh, hmm. Joe Zimmerman had that great bit about, uh, I think it's Hamilton. No, it was uh, Andrew Jackson. Jackson. Yeah, Yeah. that's a great bit. Yeah. And I'm not a history buff, and I don't know anything about Andrew Jackson, but his bit is so good because it, it like, plays it all out. He gives you all the information. It still makes it funny. Zimmerman, underrated. Joe Zimmerman, new album out. Check out Joe Zimmerman, uh, Tours with Brian Regan. Yep, yep. He's a terrific comic. Killer comic. Funny guy. Look him up, Joe Zimmerman. He's done a bunch of late night sets as well that are strong. But Mark, I think the joke Mark's talking about is in a uh, Craig Ferguson set. He oh, did, really? He did it on late night. Maybe he did it on Conan. Maybe on the Patreon, play it, and we can play I, more stuff. Yeah, I think sure. it's his, his like signature bit. Yeah, no, he's he's great. Um, this one here. Nah, nah, nah. We'll we'll save it. All right. But uh, 
What All do you right. got? I got one that's hitting, but it needs one more thing. All right. It, hit it's me. A missing is hits, but I say, you know, you can't really tell if you're in a toxic relationship. You can tell afterwards. You, you Looking mm-hmm. back, you'd be like, that was bad. You can't tell when you're in it. You know what I mean? Which, like, that's the only thing that's like that. My phone breaks. I know it's broken instantly. I'm not walking around with a cracked screen. Your friends are like, what's up with your phone? I'm like, you should see it when you're not around. Mm. It's actually it's actually a pretty good phone. Right. So maybe you should mind your own fucking business. <laughs> yeah. Worry about your phone. Looks like an Android to me. Looks like, you know, that I don't that, I don't have like a, that part gets a nice pop, but I need like an they, I don't have an ending. Like the Android thing, I'm like thinking like something like your phone looks like something maybe about fingers, you know, cuz oh, you're doing yeah. like the the, mm. the identity thing or the, the security thing. I was thinking uh it also could I know you got the phone part already, but my brain goes to alcohol. You know, like hey, oh shit, like hey, this uh, this is a good drink, and I'm feeling Wait, good. What was that? What's the reminder there for? I don't know how to fix it. <laughs> it just goes off. I pushed a bunch of buttons one day, and now it goes off at two two p.m. every day. But I just turn it off. But you have a drink, it feels good, it tastes good. But then later, you're like, oh, what was in that? Mm. You know, you're so hungover. Like later, you're like, oh, that was toxic. That was poison. But at the time, you're like, this is fun. I know so many alcohol jokes. So. Yeah, there's yeah. something about like the phone though. I, I, there's something like, um, hmm. you know, you share letting other people look at your phone. Mm-hmm. That's like a vulnerable thing. Oh yeah, letting yeah. someone in to see mm-hmm. your partner. That's a vulnerable thing. Right, right. Um, your phone. If your phone's not working, that that does. It's like like a relationship that's like chaos. Yeah, true, true. Well, you're just like, man, your phone is. So it's just the phone. It, the comp is the phone is like like the girlfriend, the toxic girlfriend. Well, it's not like it because if your phone breaks, right, you know it. I Whereas see. if your if your if your relation breaks, you're kind of the last to know. Oh, that's good. That's kind of my point. Ah, maybe uh, the only difference is. If you lose the girlfriend, you feel better. You lose your phone, you're ruined. <laughs> yeah, if someone else finds your girlfriend. Oh yeah, my God. yeah, there you go. Or something like, yeah, you've... Uh, and there's a store you can go to, like, my phone's not working. I guess that would be... Um, couples couples counseling. counseling. Yeah. You go to... Uh, yeah. We're not connecting. You know, something you're like not, that. Either way, yeah, with the phone, though, if the phone's uh, acting up, you get a new model. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Huh. I'll crack it. There's I like something it. here. Right? I like it. Yeah. Right. I'll I'll play with it. So much phone girlfriend stuff too. It's just like you got to text all the time. You got to post about her. Yeah. Um, maybe someone with a case on a phone. Yeah, you got to protect it. Yeah, it's broken. Like the screen is broken. Got to protect it. Yeah. Charging. Someone else asked if they could touch it. They're like, absolutely not. Yeah, yeah. finger your own girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Keep your fingers on your own. Uh huh. Keep your fingers away from what's mine. All right. Yeah, you're out of memory. Huh. Yeah, you got to have memory. Got to have memory. You got a girlfriend. Yeah. You better have memory. Mm-hmm. All right. How often yeah. do you get accused of not remembering? Oh my god. You didn't yeah. remember. I'm like, I know. I can't remember everything. Yeah. Then I then I uh, can tell you what Wade Boggs' batting average was, and <laughs> isn't that from when Harry three sixty three? Yeah. Oh, really? Isn't that maybe not? Yeah, maybe yeah. I just who knows. But you're like, hey, you don't remember that I like when you work the balls. <laughs> all, right. <laughs> all right. Mark, where are you going to be on the road, man? Hey, hey, I'm all over the place. Uh, let's see: Atlanta, Buckhead Theater, Milwaukee Improv, Charlotte Comedy Zone, Royal Oak. In Mark Ridley's Comedy Castle in Michigan, Kansas City Improv, Syracuse Funny Bone, ah, my nemesis. But uh, a lot of fun dates coming up. Go to marknormancomedy.com. Oh, I'm in Toronto as well at the uh, Dark got, Comedy Fest. I got to go. Is. I got to do Toronto, man. Uh, I got uh, Charlotte Comedy Zone coming up December 2nd through 4th. I got Miami Improv the following weekend. Then the Addison Improv in Dallas. Uh, we got uh, Richmond uh, coming up. Richmond. Virginia in January. We got Timonia, Maryland, Sacramento. I'm adding, I'm going to add some other shit in January. I have to pull some stuff just for my own sanity. Yeah. I'm going to try to take a vacation first one ever. We'll see how that Ooh. works. I don't fucking know how to do it. You going, uh, going on a trip? Not, not far, but okay. I, I can't go too far. All right. With this, all right. you know, next shit. But I will. Uh, you going with your phone? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, bringing, I'm bringing both phones. 